If you're looking for an interesting lo-fi flavor to add to your productions, check out Dirty Tape from Softube. And that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So this plugin is available just for a limited time for free if you have an iLock account and a Softube account between January 25th and 31st. So if you're interested in this plugin, what you see in this video, don't hesitate to grab that free plugin. So here is the plugin, Dirty Tape from Softube. I'm not super familiar with uh, Softube's product lineup. I know they have a tape delay and things like that. This is a lo-fi processor. It does not do clean tape, but it adds something pretty cool for intros and outros or for just adding some kind of movement to the sound, adding some kind of lo-fi flavor without going with the bit crushing route or the VHS tape kind of route. So we're gonna start off this demo project with the drums and all of the synths uh, processed through a couple instances of dirty tape. The wet control is actually going to fade to slowly turn off on the drums. And then in at bar 17, it's gonna be just the clean drums. Uh, and there's a different synth that comes in there. Uh, it is going to be fully processed by Dirty Tape. And all the other instruments, uh, the other synths, have the wet, dry mix in Reaper uh, automated. So let's listen to this on just the drums for now, and I will uh, bypass this envelope. I'm gonna start off bypassed. We've got drive control. No, better turn it on. So even with these settings all the way down, it doesn't really get very clean. And if we listen in the Delta solo, which is a Reaper feature, by alt clicking on that, you can hear how the sound changes. So even basically flat, this is doing quite a lot to the sound. Uh, and that itself can be interesting. So we've got a drive control from zero to 10, dirt from clean to less highs, more flutter and more dropouts all the way up to bad. Let's just loop this section here and play that. Turn the drive up to about halfway. And I'll turn up the dirt control. So you can hear that the left and right channels are getting processed more independently and with more like complete dropouts that just mutes the, the channel, the highs drop out, all that kind of stuff. I find a little bit of the flutter effect is pretty nice to add in to the drums for a kind of weird intro and it adds a lot of interesting movement to synths. So I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this plugin. And let's listen again in Delta Solo, and I'll adjust the um, the dirt knob. So 
So on clean, it's mostly processing the highs. Now we're getting this interesting phaser effect. So you actually do need to be careful of this, uh, using it in parallel or with the mix, the, the wet-dry mix, if you want to avoid that flanger phaser sort of effect. Maybe have it quickly going on between on and off rather than slow fading, if you want to avoid that. If you're using the flutter effect here, plus a long fade in, you may hear that sort of flanger effect. And especially if you want to use this as a parallel distortion, you probably want to avoid that. Keep it on the clean mode, and it will work pretty well for parallel compression or parallel distortion. And then there's a low cut. You know what to expect with that. Thins the lows. Decoupled and normal mode, that basically processes both channels the same not doesn't make it mono, but it's applying the same amount of the effect to both channels equally. And decoupled will kind of randomize that slightly between the left and the right, which can make it sound more wide. And that's a good thing. Like a lot of the other Soft2 plugins, there are some hidden controls available in um, when you enable these different panels here. So we've got input and output gain. We've got a gain, an, an auto gain set, headroom, which will make it clip earlier or later, and a high pass filter, as well as a phase invert, which actually is a phase shifter, probably an all pass filter. Also wanna quickly demo this headroom control uh, because this can add a lot more distortion and stuff to the signal in a pretty cool way. So we're gonna start off at zero and then I'm gonna turn down the headroom, which will make it clip more easily and then turn it up which will make it clean up a little bit. Let's look at using this as a parallel distortion effect. So you actually have to be kind of careful with this in parallel because you can get some weird phase cancellation issues, which you probably want to avoid unless it's for a special effect. But if you just want to use this as a, a drum dirt processor, I think you can do it, but you just have to be a little bit careful of that wow and flutter effect. Let's just add in another track, call it dirt, and bring in dirty tape. And we'll just make sure that the this is set to clean and maybe 70% drive, uh, output volume, low cut, and decoupled. Those are all good. And so on the drum track, we're gonna make a send. And I'm gonna bring it up to Unity. I'll set this to pre-fader. And audio one and two goes to one and two and no MIDI. Start with that fader all the way down and bring it up. And for fun, let's flip the polarity on it. And I'll mute that reverb. So what it's doing is processing those highs and lows. And I'll just turn up the dirt control a little bit. And there's this swirling effect that you might not like. So that's why I recommend keeping it on clean. So let's move on to the synths here. Again, I'll just bypass the automation. And bypassed. So 
So it already has some modulation and reverb and things built into that sound. Adding in this effect adds a lot of interesting motion. Obviously, there's a lot of filtering going on in here as well. But I think it's really cool. There's that, and then I've got another arpeggio synth. So here's how it sounds bypassed. I think that's a really interesting way of adding movement and color and distortion. And uh, yeah, it's a fun way of kind of beefing that up in an interesting way. And maybe don't have that effect on the entire song, but yeah, it just adds something cool. This is pretty impressive for a free plugin. I think it's going to get a lot of use. Okay, and there's this thick bass sort of thing. Again, this is the only effect on it. I'll bypass it. It took me probably half an hour to get it uh, added to my account, authorized with the iLock, downloaded and into Reaper. It's a little bit slower than I'm used to for plugins, but it is the first day of this promotion and there's a million people trying to get it at the same time. So just bear that in mind, it may take a day to actually get it uh, installed. So that's it, I hope you found this interesting. Check out the playlist linked at the end of the video for more plugin demos and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs>